Hello, and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Wednesday, the 20th of April, Wednesday of Easter week. Today, I'd like to talk a little bit about perspective and recognizing who your neighbor is. Um, Sometimes I think we sort of get ourselves wrapped up in our own little worlds and don't pay much attention to things that are happening around us. And I know for me, especially when I've had as busy a week as I did last week, that it can become really easy to sort of focus on where I've been and what I'm doing and, you know, what I need and things like that. But sometimes you just need to step back and take a look at things from somebody else's perspective. Last night, Tuesday night, we had a a young man over for dinner. We meant to have him over for Easter day, but Rob wasn't feeling well, so we thought we'd put that off for a couple of days. So his name is Matt, and he is a um, a BTP, a um, basic training personnel, um, who is um, sort of on in holding pattern for a while, waiting for a course. And Rob gets some of them as staff to help out at the chapel, because the chapel on base isn't just a chapel; it also is a rec space, and they keep it open. They have really like five G Wi Fi and big screen TVs and video games and opportunities for the the soldiers to, you know, to Skype with their families and use the Wi-Fi for that or come in and just crash on a big comfortable couch when they're not in, you know, you know, they're not in training and things like that. And Matt is one of the guys who, who works in the chapel and is spending his time during the day there and they get to know Rob pretty well and they become like family. I've talked about Brandon before and Brandon was, was, the person who's, whose job uh, Matt is taking because Brandon has moved on to different things. But it's hard to, to remember. We think about our military members and we think about what they what they do. And, and, you know, sometimes it's easy to think rah, rah, rah. You know, they wear the uniform and they go off to war and they live these fancy lives and, and get deployed and see see the world and all that. But there's a whole lot of hurry up and wait. And for some of these guys the hurry up and wait can be far away from home like living from it on being from ontario and being stuck here in wainwright when you don't have a car and there's no bus system and there's not much to do and your job every day isn't to go out and you know take storm the hill but to take care of the chapel and make sure everything's running well and it's actually a pretty good job it's pretty pretty great job for them but um, I think it probably gets pretty boring sometimes and lonely. And these young men, um, they've mostly the, the folks who have worked in the chapel have been young men and they get to know the chaplains really well. And I think that's really good for them because they get to see a completely different side of the military than, than most soldiers would until they get in trouble. Nine times out of 10, your chaplain is going to get phone calls about, um, you know, a next of kin notification, you know, somebody back home has died, can you please talk to this young soldier? Or maybe, you know, there's a marital dispute or, you know, private bloggins has been away from home too long and his wife and baby are really missing him and he's struggling and things like that. But once in a, and once in a while, you know, the chaplain gets called to do a baptism or a wedding or something happy and that's awesome. But a lot of people, I think, in the military and outside the military don't understand just what a chaplain does. And one of the things that the chaplains do at the chapel at Wainwright is they get to know and they mentor the young BTPs, these young men and women who are hanging out with them all day, every day, who learn about how the chapel works because they become the sanctuary guild or the altar guild for the chapel. They set things up and get services ready. They don't lead services, obviously, but they prepare the chapel. They do cleaning and they do uh, administration work and greeting, and they are the face of the chapel and the rec space, and they do a wonderful job. But every once in a while, we realize, you know, maybe they're lonely, maybe they need a break. So we'll have them over for dinner. And so Matt came over for dinner last night, and it was great just to see life through the eyes of a, of a 20-something, because I'm not a 20-something anymore, and life is very different. Life is, is a whole different set of dreams and ideas and, and, and things like that. And watching this young person come into our home, I remember, think, I remember thinking to myself last night when I, I had been in the office working when they first got home. And when I came out, they were having this lively conversation. 
And it was absolutely incredible because, well, some of it was about the military. Lots of it was just about life, about what it's like to be, you know, somebody in your 20s and talking about family and his car and his nephew and things like that. And remembering, getting that perspective and recognizing that sometimes, sometimes life isn't just about us. Sometimes life is about that person that you work with or the person who lives next door or the, the, the grocery store clerk or somebody that you maybe don't know very well. But maybe you should get, maybe you're being called by God to get to know them a little bit better. We know how we think. We know what's important to us and our world, our little universe is here. We, it's, it's, it's so big and we deal within it. But when we reach out, when we break beyond the bounds of our own universe and reach out to somebody we don't know, like me getting to know Matt last night, I've known him for a little while, but getting to know him on a more personal basis and listening to his stories, not just stuff about the military, but about his mom and dad and his brother and his nephew and his Nona and, and his, you know, his family and how they hang out together and how he want, what he wants to do with his life. It reminded me that there is so much more to life than just the little universe in which I live. There are people who have big dreams and big fears and there are people who know things that are different than I do and being able to just sit in his presence and not worry about getting the dishes done or what time it is and how much work I have to do just being present and allowing my perspective to change being able to see the world through the eyes of someone of a different gender someone of a different age someone from a different geography it opens up my own world in a completely new and different way. Matt came over and got to share a little bit of our lives, which gave him a break from being in the shacks or the barracks, from being always in the chapel where he's at work or playing his video games, which he does all the time, and allowed him a chance to be part of a family, to just sort of have a, a you know, no uniform, take off your shoes and your hat, relax and have a good meal have some dessert, and just just talk. It allowed him a little bit of normalcy in a world in which there isn't very much of that at all. But his, his having some normalcy brought me back the, into the perspective of what it is I do and why I'm called to do it. I am not called to be some kind of super priest, even though sometimes that's what I think, that I have to be bigger than, better than, faster than, doing more than. Sometimes I need to just relax and be pay attention to how God is speaking to me in this moment, which I got a lot of last night talking to Matt. Sometimes we need those moments when we forget about ourselves and we see the world through someone else's eyes, which makes us look at our own worlds differently. One of the things that I've really been thinking about lately, perspective wise, is our military and the fact like Rob's boss, his chaplain boss, is a, is an Orthodox priest. And he's one of the chaplains who has been sent to, to Poland to help the Ukrainian peoples who were there. All of a sudden, my world has gotten a lot bigger and a lot smaller at the same time because I work with my congregations, but I also recognize that my husband works with people who are tra young people who are training for the potential of having to go places like Ukraine or Latvia or Poland for, for, for training for the potential of what could happen now that our new world order is changing. This young man, this young man named Matt, who came to hang out with us and just have a meal and just have a quiet evening and to celebrate Easter a little bit late. He didn't talk about it, but I have to wonder in his head, is he wondering, am I going to be sent there someday? Will someday this meal feel like a distant memory compared to what I'm faced with? Perspective. I'm tired from e from Holy Week, and it's a good kind of tired, but I am tired. But that not anywhere near the kind of tired that our young men and women and not so young men and women must be feeling as they prepare themselves to face a world that could cause them harm or to which they could bring harm because they're trying to save us from harm ourselves. A little perspective. My life 
is great. My life is filled with peace and good food and good company and a warm roof, a roof over my head and do and dude and my husband and wonderful things, a new home. And yet at the same time, there are people, 69,000 plus of them in Canada who have chosen to voluntarily give up their families, a roof over their heads, a warm, good meal, their pets and their children, all so that if they are called, they can go to take care of business for us. A new perspective. As we pay attention to what is happening in the world and as we pray for peace and we pray for hope and we pray for tempers to cool down and people to start making decisions that are healthy for the world, we need to remember always that there are people who will make decisions about their own lives that would put their that decisions that would put their own lives in danger so that we wouldn't have to, so that we can have opportunities to sit back and have some perspective. So as you go about your day, say a prayer for our Canadian Armed Forces. Say a prayer for those soldiers in Ukraine. Say a prayer for those people, those soldiers in Russia who are not participating in the war crimes, the, the men and women who are choosing to do the right thing, even though it could get them in trouble, because I have to believe that some of them have, have good hearts, that they aren't all evil. Say a prayer for your sons and daughters, your grandsons and granddaughters, your nieces and nephews, your neighbors, who have signed on the dotted line, sworn an oath to queen and country, and who are willing to take a different perspective so that our perspectives might be safe. God bless them for what they do to serve. May we never have to know what it is that they see and do, because our world will be at peace. May we always, always give thanks and appreciate and not take for granted all that they do for us, not because they must, but because they choose. So for all the Matts and Brandons and for all the Robs and Kents and Tonys and for all of the people, the men and women that we know and we don't know here in Wainwright or in Edmonton, in Petawawa and Borden, Halifax, across this country and around the world, may we say a prayer for peace. May we say a prayer for hope. May we say a prayer that their perspective is one which will give them a good night's rest and an opportunity to say hello to their families as well. So God bless them and God bless you as you pray for them. Have a good day. And remember that your good day is filled with choices and opportunities because many other people have chosen to serve you through service in this country. God bless everybody. God bless.